Hi, my name is Wouter Emery and I'm the founder of Airshaper. In this video, we're going to discuss aerodynamic shape optimization using the adjoint technique. Here's a short teaser showing you what this looks like applied to the rear of a Porsche Taycan. But let's first go through the different steps to understand how this works. But before we even dive into aerodynamics, let's first have a quick look at how optimization problems are typically solved in general. Imagine we want to maximize a certain output value y, which could be the lift of an airfoil, by changing the input variable x, which could be the angle of attack of that same airfoil. The relationship between x and y can be expressed through a mathematical function, which we can call our objective function. To find the maximum lift value, we can start by picking a random value for the angle of attack on the x-axis and calculate the corresponding lift value on the y-axis. We can then pick a second point close to it and do the same thing. With these two data points known, we can now calculate the local gradient, which indicates the direction in which we need to march to improve or increase the objective function, which is lift in this case. If you take enough of these steps, you will actually end up at the peak. Of course, if the step size is too big, you can overshoot and miss the peak, or you can get stuck on a local peak instead of a bigger peak which is located further away. Nevertheless, this is the basic method that is used for gradient-based optimization methods. Now let's move on to the aerodynamics aspect. In aerodynamic simulations, the airflow around an object is chopped up into small bits and pieces, called cells within the mesh, much like the pixels in a digital photograph. This means that on the surface, the surface is also chopped up into small surface cells with nodes at the corners. Now if you want to obtain the total drag and lift on an object, we need to integrate the pressure and the friction force on all of these small surface cells to obtain the total value. Consequently, this means that each individual node has an impact on the total drag and lift of an object. The objective function has not just one, but thousands if not millions of input variables, the x, y and z coordinates of each individual node. Now to obtain the local gradient, you would need to move one node individually, redo the entire aerodynamic simulation and then calculate the local gradient, to know whether you should push the node inward or outward to increase or decrease the objective function. Once you have obtained all of these local gradients, you can put them all together and construct what is called a sensitivity map. This map will tell you on the entire surface of the object where to locally push it inward or outward to improve your objective function. Now, as you can imagine, if you have to obtain the local gradients by rerunning an entire aerodynamic simulation for each node, which means thousands of simulations, this quickly becomes prohibitively expensive. Luckily, there's something called the adjoint technique. In short, the adjoint technique allows you to calculate all of these local gradients or sensitivities in one single simulation. To understand how this works, let's first have a quick look at how the normal aerodynamic simulation, also called the forward or the primal simulation, is performed. Once the computational mesh has been generated, the flow velocity is set to either zero or to some fixed value for all the cells in the entire domain. Then, starting from the boundary conditions, like the input velocity of a virtual wind tunnel, small steps in time are taken to gradually propagate towards a fully developed flow around the object. Starting from this aerodynamic simulation data, the adjoint simulation, also called the dual or the backward simulation, does the opposite thing. Starting from the goal, the objective function, which could be again lift or drag or something else, it calculates backwards, again using small iterative steps, to assess how each node impacts this total goal. Based on these results, we can then calculate again all of the local gradients and construct the sensitivity map. So instead of running a full aerodynamic simulation to calculate the local gradient of each node, which would mean thousands, millions of simulations, which would be prohibitively expensive, you can now run just two simulations. The normal aerodynamic simulation, the primal simulation, and the adjoint or the dual simulation. So the next step is to take this sensitivity map and actually start implementing it. The map will tell you where to move the surface slightly inward or a lot outward and so on to morph your 3D object. Once you have morphed your 3D object, you can rerun the primal aerodynamic simulation to check how much the objective function, lift or drag or something else, has changed. You can then also rerun the adjoint simulation to again calculate a new sensitivity map and do the morphing all over again. 
With each cycle, you will get closer to the most optimal design for your object. You can do this on the entire object, or you can constrain it to what is called a design space, which is typically a box in which the algorithm is allowed to play or morph the 3D model. Now let's get back to the Porsche Taycan. Imagine we want more downforce at the rear of the car. In that case, we could create a design box around the rear boot of the car and constrain the algorithm to only work in that region. Interestingly enough, after a number of cycles, the eye joint optimization technique starts morphing the car into what is called a ducktail spoiler, which is an iconic shape that Porsche has been applying for decades. Now this is just one example. This aerodynamic shape optimization technique can be applied to airplanes for example to increase the lift or on drones, we can apply it to helmets to reduce the drag for bicycles, for motorbikes, and we can even apply it to trucks, buses and so on to reduce drag and thus increase their fuel or battery efficiency. So that was it for this short video on how aerodynamic shape optimization works. I hope you liked it, if you did please do click the like button and leave an interesting comment. Thanks a lot for watching, see you soon, bye bye.